In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to take a set of pre-made toolpaths based on our Vectric widget file here and array copy them so we can make more than one copy of the same toolpath. And then we're going to have a look at saving those out. So this is where we're going to aim to get to, but let's have a look at creating our own file. So let's go to File and Close, and we're going to open up the Vectric widget toolpaths file. Now you'll notice when we open this file up, we've got our widget here. And if you pop over to our 3D view, we can have a look at our layers up at the top here. So you can see we've got our different layers and we can turn them on and off to see what is on each layer. So we've got the cutout layer, which is the outside of this design. We've got the slots, we've got the drill holes, we have the text, and we have the cross hatch. Now crucially, it's good to understand that each of these layers will be associated with a toolpath. So let's have a look at some of those toolpaths. So if we pop up here and press this icon to switch to the toolpath menu, we can now have a look at some of our toolpaths. So now we're on our toolpaths menu, you can see that we've got multiple toolpaths here and they're associated with the layers and the vectors on those layers. And let's have a look at how that's done. So if we go into our profile cutout toolpath, you can see I've got the show advanced options on. And if we go down to the bottom, you've got this option for vector selection and we'll click the selector. And now you'll see that this current profile toolpath option has the selected layers only. Now I've got it to set to the cutout layer. So that means anything on the cutout layer, which you can see in the background, is this dash pink line, is going to be cut by this profile toolpath. So that is all of the open vectors, the closed vectors on this uh, particular layer will be associated with this toolpath. You can see I've checked the box here to associate with this toolpath. So any closed or open vectors on the cutout layer only will be associated with this toolpath. So we can close this form out, close this one out, and let's look at another one. So let's go down to our profile cross hatch. And again, if we go down to the selector, click on it. Again, you'll notice that the, in the background, the vectors that are on this layer are highlighted. And in the selected layers only, we've got the cross hatch. All open and closed vectors on this layer, the cross hatch layer, will be associated with this particular toolpath. So you can see how powerful that tool is and how it allows you to arrange your layers and your toolpaths. But let's close out the form for now and let's have a look at what the preview for this currently looks like. So let's pop up to the preview toolpaths icon over here and click on that. We'll select our toolpaths and then we're going to click preview all toolpaths. Now what this will do is actually go through in order. So you'll notice it does a cutout, then the pocket slots, the drill holes, the profile crosshatch, and then the profile text. And you can see it actually checks through them as it does this. Now, another thing to note here is that the first three toolpaths here are all using the same end mill. You can notice if I hover over that toolpath, it tells me I'm using a 0.25 inch end mill or a quarter inch end mill. Same for the pockets, same for the profile. And then for the crosshatch and the text, a V bit, 90 degrees, half inch V bit for each one of these toolpaths. Now, Let's say you didn't just want one of these, but you wanted a whole sheet of these. Well, we can look at doing that. So let's first reset our preview and we'll pop over to the design tab. And then we can go into our job setup sheet and we can change this to a width of 96 by 48. And we can click OK to apply that change. And then you'll notice in the 3D view, we can then select this option here to turn on our vectors. And you can see now how our vector is now in the bottom left for our widget. And you can see just how much space we have to work with in order to get this now onto uh, our worksheet. So we can definitely make the most of this space uh, to create a whole sheet of these. Now to actually create an array copy of all these, an array copy toolpath of all these, we need to go over to the toolpath menu. So let's pop over to the toolpath menu by clicking this button here. And let's open up the array copy tool close on the preview, and let's click on this button just here. So with our menu open, you can see it says we have no toolpath selected because we have no toolpath selected. So if we come down here and check this box, what this will do is it will highlight and check all of our toolpaths. So you can see here, as we stated earlier, that the end mill is being used for the first three toolpaths, the same end mill, and the V bit is the same for the bottom two toolpaths in this order. So for the crosshatch and the text. So now that we can see the toolpaths that we're working with, let's have a look at some of the options within our form. So you can see here we have the options for the amount of rows you would like, the amount of columns you would like, and then we have the options here for offset and gap. Now the offset will actually be from the bottom left hand corner, and you can see you can specify distance for the offset in X and Y, and likewise you can do it for the gap. Now the gap would actually be the gap between each copy as indicated by the uh, image here. You can see it will be the distance between 
each copy of that toolpath or that vector. So in this case, if the gap was 1.5 in X and Y, there'd be a 1.5 inch gap between each of these vectors. And then you can also see there's an option here to minimize tool changes. Now, with this option, it groups the toolpaths with the same tool geometry across the copies so they can be output together. By grouping in this way, the parts of each copy using the same tool are cut together and the entire array can be cut with minimum tool changes. So it's quite a handy option to utilize. Now for my particular settings, I'm gonna use five rows, 11 columns, a gap of 1.5 uh, between each of the toolpaths. And the reason I'm using a gap as opposed to an offset is because this widget is about seven or so inches across. And by the time it offsets over and over again, you start to get to a point where they would start overlapping and I want to have a dedicated gap between each of these. So I've set for a gap value of 1.5 here and I'm not actually going to use the minimize tool changes for the moment because in this scenario, we're going to assume that we're going to cut one of our widgets out, changing tools as often as we like or as often as we need to, popping that piece off and then finishing it off while it moves on to the next part so we can finish that first part uh, before the next one is done, so on and so on. So with that in mind, let's click Calculate and have a look at what this looks like. So you can see several things there. You can see that the original toolpath has been taken and array copied across the sheet using the settings that we've set in the array copy tool. So we now have an entire sheet of these widgets. And you can also see we now have a parent toolpath for our toolpath. So you can see we've got the array copy toolpath here that encompasses all the toolpaths underneath it. But with that said, let's have a look at what the preview looks like. So let's come up to preview all toolpaths. And let's take a look at what this looks like in action. So you can see it's going around and cutting each one of these. So you could cut this one first, take it off to go finish it, while the rest cut out and so forth. And then we are just going to finish up with our last one at the top there. Now I'm pretty happy with that, but what if I wanted to minimize the tool changes? Well, we can go back in and make some changes rather easily. So if we go over to the array copy toolpath over here, the parent toolpath, we double click it, it will open up back into our array copy toolpath form, and we can now look at minimizing some of the tool changes. So let's check the minimize tool changes option, because as explained earlier, what this will do is effectively take the toolpaths that use the same tool and run them together, group them together and run them together, and then you can run the toolpaths with a different tool after you've done your tool change. So in this case, that would be the profile pockets and drill holes first because they all use the core and gem mill, and then you can run the uh, VBit tool for your profile crosshatch and the profile text in this scenario. Now at this stage, it's really good to point out that you would need to have a post processor that can support tool changes or that your control software and post processor have a stop command so that after the first set of toolpaths are run, the machine will stop, the spindle will stop, you can safely make the manual tool change, and then you can switch to the V-bit in this case and then run that set of toolpaths in the array copy toolpath. But otherwise you would need a specific ATC or automatic tool change post processor. But with that covered, let's click calculate and let's have a look at our toolpaths. So let's hit Reset Preview, and then we're going to go to Preview All Toolpaths. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit so you can see what's happening. So if I click Preview All Toolpaths, you'll notice that what it's doing now is it's doing the end mill toolpath. So it's doing the profile cutout, the pocket slots, and the drill holes, and it's only doing those at the moment. You'll notice it's only doing those and moving on to the next one. So let's just speed that up to see what that looks like after they're all done. So again, it's only doing the tool for the uh, 0.25-inch end mill, so the quarter-inch end mill and then it's gonna move on to our V-bit. Now you'll notice here, it's doing the crosshatch and the text. So you can see how it's grouped those together. So it only does the m mill tool, uh, tool pass together and then it does the V-bit tool pass together. So we can speed that up to see what the finished uh, product looks like. I've just gone through and there we are. That's the uh, finished array copy tool path. And that's it all done, ready to go and get saved to go cut out on a machine. Now I'm just gonna pop over to the 2D view for a moment to show you something because you'll notice in our 2D view, we only have the one set of vectors. So you can see that there's not actually multiple across this worksheet because what's actually happening here is that the array copy toolpath tool is literally array copying the toolpaths, not the actual vectors. It's not actually taking the vectors and recreating them every time it's not drawing them out every time, it's just taking the tool pass and creating the tool pass every time with that parameter that we set, which is the 1.5 gap in X and Y 
over our worksheet depending on how many columns and rows that we have set. Now if you wanted to make a change to one of your toolpaths, it's actually really easy to do and you can do it by just going into the individual toolpath and applying that change and apply it to all of the arrayed copies. So if we go into our profile cut for example, and I change this from cutting to 0.375 to 0.376, so I don't want to cut the exact material length, I want it to cut through the material, I can click calculate, I get a uh, warning to say that you're going to be cutting through the material, so to be careful of your settings, so I know in this case I will be, so I'm going to click OK, my machine set up ready for that. And what I can now do is if I reset the preview, highlight all of my toolpaths again, I'm going to preview all toolpaths, and it's actually applied that change to all of the toolpaths. So now when you see, if I flip the view around, it's actually cut all the way through the actual uh, material. So you can see here it's cut all the way through. If I pop it back around again and use a view control to pop it back down to top, you can see it's cut all the way through. And I only had to make the one change, which was just that one profile toolpath. I didn't have to open the array copy toolpath menu up again. It is literally that simple. You can just go into the toolpath that needs amending, amend it, and because it has the parent toolpath of the array, it will apply it to all of the arrayed toolpaths. Similarly, if we go back to the 2D view, if you need to make any changes with your vectors. Any changes that you make to the vectors will actually apply across the board with your array copy toolpath. And that's because each of the vectors are associated with a specific layer and those layers are associated with the toolpath. So if you change anything here, let's say you change the size of the vectors, for example, that would be reflected in your toolpath as well. So the tool is quite powerful and then we'll take any of these changes into effect. And now at this stage, what you can do is look at actually saving out your toolpath. So in order to do that, let's uh, close out the preview menu and we'll go to this icon here for save toolpaths. And we've got our selected toolpath option here. We're gonna check all of our toolpaths and I'm just gonna change the post processor to show you the difference between the automatic tool change post and the standard post for the tool change commands. You notice that I get this error, the visible toolpath uh, use different tools and the selected post processor does not support tool changing. So what that's telling me is, that the post processor does not have the appropriate tool change commands in order to use this toolpath or to save these out. So in this case, I'm gonna to switch to my ATC post or my automatic tool change post. So again, as we discussed earlier, it's important to have the automatic tool change ability on your machine to use this toolpath or the ability to stop on that controller after a tool change for that machine. So it needs to be able to have a tool change in the controller as well as the post processor. So you can run the first tool, stop, change the tool, run the second tool. But in this case, I've got my automatic uh, tool change post, so I'm just going to click save toolpath. I'm going to save it as array copy toolpath widget, so it's nice and obvious, and I've saved out uh, my toolpath, so I can now go run that on the machine. And similarly, I can now save out my file. So if I come up to file and save as, I'm just going to save this one as array at the end of Vetric widget toolpath array. And then it's nice and obvious as to what it is. So I've got this file now to use later so I can make edits to it and I can make changes to it if I ever need to come back to it at a later point. But that covers how to use the array copy tool in the software. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.